I mean, my whole career and interest in, for the last 10 years has been about how people are persuaded. And people always think, oh, we're in Aspen Ideas. We're the smart ones. We're only talking about those dumb people way over there who are affected by Russian propaganda or those vulnerable kids way over there. We're talking about everyone. I can, you know, you can turn your phone, I can turn your phone into a slot machine and I can have you checking it every 15 minutes. Um, it's very easy to actually to, to persuade people, and I think what we have to do is turn the telescope around. I've been using this metaphor recently that when we went into space, uh, we were so excited about all the new places we could go out in space that it took us 10 years to turn the telescope back around and actually point it at ourselves. And look at what look, we could learn about planet Earth. About planet Earth. And I think the same thing is happening about human nature. Yeah. We have these mythic narratives because we're so powerful creating all this great stuff in science. We don't look at our own vulnerab vulnerabilities. We think that we're immune. That's so nice. the, it starts with looking at yourself and saying, this is actually how human nature works. And that's what we mean by like humane technologies. You, you say, this is an honest view of human nature, how vulnerable we are. Yeah. Starting from that place, this is how you compassionately design to protect that. And Anya? Well, I just, I, I want to build on that and say that the, I see an opportunity here in the progress of what we also saw this spring um, with the, uh, the whole movement around Parkland, which was such an example of how social media by the children who grew up in it, breathing it like oxygen, probably refreshing Facebook too many times and Instagram and Snapchat. Nobody up. needed to tell them how to use it <laughs> to good effect. Instantly in their, felt that this was a power at their command. And how do we build a participatory internet? How do you create a world where people feel like technology is human because it's made up of human beings making choices and doing things deliberately and consciously? And I try to talk to families about doing that themselves and sharing conscious uses of technology with their kids so the conversation isn't just about don't do it or wait to do it. It's this is how we do it, this is why we do it. And tell us a little bit more about your how advice. I think that we use technology when we're being our best selves to create, to connect, to discover, and to enjoy. And when we share those uses with our kids, we're modeling for them, we're mediating the bad stuff, we're helping them think critically. If you say what I say goes, and I say yes or I say no, you are conditioning a child to believe what they hear. And that's exactly what we don't want to do. We want a child who says why and pushes back and says, how do you know that? And can we look it up together? And wow, this thing says this and that thing says that. And that's the new dinner cable conversation. That's the debate. It's a debate with your phone in your hand sometimes. I think that's important. I don't think that we just always ban it. I think that, I mean, Common Sense talks about this. But we're building, we're helping the kids, and I think a lot of times the kids are leading the way into being participants in this technological world.